What's going on guys? Victor here. And today is a very exciting day because I'm fishing with my buddy Brandon back here of Lunchbox. How are we doing today? Good morning. Now Brandon is a very special dude because this guy absolutely crushes it. We've been talking on Instagram for like, I don't know, a few months now. I When I say Slayer, I mean absolute Slayer. Isn't your nickname the killer? Yeah, Captain Kill. Captain Kill. <laughs> Captain Kill. This guy is like everything from freaking swordfish to porgies to AJ's, everything. If you guys, I've been on a lot of boats and if you guys have seen people's screens, you want to talk about spots? He's got like 4,000 spots. He's yeah. been fishing these waters since 1999 and he told me the big porgies are biting. Uh, black spot snapper? Uh, black, black fin snapper. Black fin snapper. We're going to be getting uh, vermilion snappers, yellow eyes snappers. Snowies possibly. Snowy groupers later on in the day, or red groupers. We get keeper muttons out here. We get a variety pack. I am so stoked. And we got his buddy Justin in the back too. And uh, yeah, so what we're doing at, what we're doing and starting out with is chicken rigs. Chicken rig, all it is, it's a fancy name for a bunch of hooks on one single line, 30, 60 pound leader. We got both little circle hooks like a 3-0 Mustad and little chunks of bonita and we're gonna drop it down we're in like 200 to 250 on this ledge and he says there's just a really big biomass of snapper and porgies out here yesterday he crushed them like all the porgies we got were over five pounds weren't they correct yeah five five six up to ten pound jolt heads uh mixed in with the big red groupers so okay so this is what we're doing we got three chicken rigs down and the reason for all those hooks is you're fishing 250 feet of water you want to maximize your chances down there, right? Correct. Because you got to drop down and then you got to reel all the way back up. You're not fishing in 30, 50 feet. And they're usually a big biomass of fish down there. So you catch them up to four at a time sometimes, right? Oh yeah, four or five. I mean, sometimes we get crazy. We'll put 10 hooks on, have competitions to see Ooh. how many you can get on there. We'll get some big D lines. What do you got, Meg? Oh, I can't stay away from the tauntings. But I got myself a black fin. I'm excited. Yeah. These, these little black fin snappers, telling Brandon perfect look at that fillet and tell me you don't see a fish taco right there yeah beautiful it's like the perfect size little black fin snapper these actually just changed they don't have a size limit anymore and as you can see he's not gonna be able to be released tasty little guys this one feels like he might have a little shoulder on him a little shoulders on him right? oh, 200 more to go need about 400 fish in the boat Look at oh, that, triples up, baby. Both of you. you both got variety. And you both have the same variety no on the way. same no way. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make that up. Wow. We just, we messed up on the hooks. You need right, to have right. your Tom Tate in the middle. <laughs> right. <laughs> I love that. Wow. Good job. And they're so, all like the exact same size. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that funny? All right. One vermilion, one Tom Tate in the middle, and one blackfin snapper. Nice. No size, right? No size on those. Good to go. We're no allowed size. 10 each, so. 40 of those puppies. Look at that. Little black on their fins, on their peck fin right there. Such a pretty little fish. And that's really the only way to really tell these from the yellow eye snappers is this little black fin. We'll catch some yellow eyes later and we'll compare the two. Vermilion. It's amazing. Even in 250 feet, you could feel how much colder it is down there. You feel you feel these fish, they're cold. Literally as soon as it hits bottom. Look at my rod tip. Look at this. You guys see how I set the hook? We're fishing little circle hooks. I didn't even set it. I literally lifted the rod tip two inches up. A lot of times they'll just hook themselves because they have that big 12 ounce or 16 ounce lead. And just that alone will hook them. See, he's on there, but I'm gonna drop it back down. Keeping my line slack, but tight at the same time. I'm trying to load up on these guys. Let's see what we got. Let's see what's in the lunch box today. That's right. What did mama pack? <laughs> I love it. Tom Tate City, man. Two Tom Tates. Queen Triggerfish. Look at that thing. Purple, yellow, blue, all lit up. And this is a knobbed porgy. That's insane. You can tell it's a knobbed porgy because it has an orange mouth. It's got the orange lipstick on it. There's a lot of them down there, multiple species, but with the grind, we'll get quite a few of these. Good job. This is a beautiful fish. Look at that guy right there. That guy will light, well, not light you up, but he's very spiny. All over his face, everything. Uh huh. Gosh, look at that. He's got a little purple on his belly. Oh, That's the coolest little fish I've ever seen. 
<laughs> Check it out. Brick and I just pulled up two knob porgies, about the same size. Gonna eat very well. No size limit on these, right? No size limit, no bag limit. Good to go. So we've been picking away at fish. We haven't recorded everything. We've got a lot of vermilions, a lot of blackfin snapper, decent amount of porgies in the box. One really big porgy that Bricky caught. But yeah, we're filling up the box. The lunch box is getting full, baby. All right, guys, so this is our last drop in this spot. And you know, we're doing good. We don't got the huge porgies that he had yesterday. We got one big one, but the box is looking good. Vermilions, blackfin snapper, all different species of porgies. And all three of us, we're dropping three or four rods down at once with chicken rigs, trying to maximize those opportunities. And we've noticed you'll drift by certain spots. You'll get on the outside edge of the vermilions or the blackfins, and you'll get a lot more porgies. So it's just a matter of getting that perfect drift and getting that porgy to notice your bait because that's what we really want those big porgies but we want everything let's be real here right yeah, that's right that's right they all they all taste the same so we got two one. more porgies for the dinner table want to explain yeah. the difference yeah we have the uh, silver porgy it doesn't have the orange mouth like the uh, knob one we caught earlier this is a small knob porgy they don't get as big usually you can get these all the way into 30 feet of water and you can tell the difference too by the little blue on them. A little more blunt head like a bull dolphin. And this one here will grow to in excess of 20 pounds. Ooh, big. It's a giant, yeah. Dry big tortugas, you get them 15, 20 pounds fishing gogs on the bottom. Jeez, so, but both of them have no size limit, no bag limit, and great to eat. Mild here. meat on them. I want to show you guys something. What's cool about these fish, like Brandon was saying, they're crustacean eaters. You can always tell fish like hogfish, you see those little structures in there? Those little round balls? It, it's kind of like teeth, but not really. They use it to crush coral, crabs, anything, anything real hard. It's very unique to this uh, species of fish. Sheep's head, like you said, it's the same uh, family of fish. I don't think I've ever heard anyone describe teeth as structures before. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you call them? You said, look at these structures in They're here. They're structures. <laughs> Come to the porgy party. That's right. There we go, looking good. Rick just caught a porgy, and Brandon's like, that squid looks a little fresh. Upon further examination, that is a little baby octopus that the porgy spit up. How cool is that? So you can see it's an octopus, it's but let's see. Eyes. One, two, three. The two eyes, he's got that balloon shaped oh, head. That's what they're eating out there in the wild. Another porgy. Good job, Brickster. Good job. Something tried to eat this one when he was little. You can see how his spikes are all messed up? Yep. Oh, yeah. Compare and contrast there. These are actually in the tortugas when I catch black groupers. These will be in their bellies. This is what the black grouper and the tortugas eat. No way. Yeah, they love the porgies. I know you guys are seeing a lot of fish go in the cooler, but like Brandon and I were talking about earlier, we don't mind killing fish as long as it has a purpose. So whatever we don't eat, Brandon's got family, Justin's got family, plus Brandon can sell stuff because he's a commercial fisherman, so nothing goes to waste. If you guys ever wondered how seafood gets in a fish market or your favorite restaurant, it's gotta come out of the ocean somehow from guys like Brandon. All right, I think this is either a double porgy or the biggest porgy I've hooked. A lot of times when we're doing this, you'll hook your one fish and you make sure he's glued on there. You'll drop it back down, let it lay on bottom for a little bit. And that's the nice thing with these mustad circles, you get them in the corner and you know they're generally not gonna pull. And then you can hopefully get another fish on there. Yes. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's there a, you go. Wow, these look perfect. Too, nice. See, so you drop it down, you go from one fish to three fish, just uh, like that. Two vermilions, one porgy for the price nice porgy too. of one drop. Seems like porgies, vermilions, uh, blackfin snapper all kind of hang out in the same area. Yep, vermilions, yellow eye snapper, uh, keeper red groupers, and the triggerfish, they'll all be in the same exact habitat. Is, is it just hard bottom or is it, what it's, do you think is down It's there? hard bottom and the continental shelf goes from 230 to 280 within 50 feet of where we're fishing. So it's a sharp drop off, but they're always on the top of the drop off as, as opposed to being on the downside. I got you. I think 
due to the upwelling, I assume. It yeah. brings all that fresh food to them and stacks them up there for us. Knowledge, knowledge right here. So every time we drop down, we got a combination of baits. We got squid, bonita, and this little white part, that's the skin of the bonita that's like impossible to get off the hook. But eventually it accumulates and it's like its own bait. We got little chunks of tom tate on, all sorts of stuff, but they seem to really like the red meat, the bonita, don't they? They do, they key in on that red meat. You know, the bigger fish like it and it stays on your hook a lot better when you're dropping, so. Definitely want to have that in the arsenal and it's free. Right, so we just rolled up to the dock and I met a subscriber here. Yes, sir. What's your name? Nick. Nick. Nick nice the Panacea. Yeah. Nick the what? The Panacea. I'm oh, Italian. <laughs> this is my boy Matt Davis. How's we going? fish a lot. We don't catch as much fish as him, but Yo, you know, we're, we're, we're trying out there. It's nice to meet you, bro. <laughs> nice to hey, meet you. if you guys ever see Brooke or I in public, please say hi. You have no idea how many people will DM us on Facebook or Instagram like five minutes later and say, we saw you. We were just too shy or something or too scared to say hi. So say hi if you guys see us. Sure. That guy over there said hi. <laughs> <laughs> Epic day with my man Brandon right here. Appreciate you. You guys, he does a couple things. He primarily commercial fishes, but right. he does do charters. I'm gonna have all of his stuff linked below. Lunchbox fishing charters, and you guys can follow him on Instagram at Lunchbox Fishing Captain Brandon. I appreciate it. We had a great day out there. Got the variety that we wanted. A lot of porgies, you know. Look at this stud. Dinner and a show. Giant porgies. Multiple species today. Yeah, and this is literally every day for him. And this is every day. I mean, he does double this sometimes by himself, don't you? Yeah, easily, easily. Yeah, we had a good day though. We got what we came for. Alrighty, guys, we're gonna fly up some porgies, and I've been wanting to do a video like this for a long time. We need to get better at porgy fishing. I love these fish, and I love the variety between the different species: the silver porgy and the knob porgy. And these are seriously some really cool-looking fish, especially when you first catch them. They're all lit up like this guy. He had all those turquoises and aquas and greens and blues. Just really pretty fish. Okay, so we're gonna start with the knob porgy right here by the head. Kind of cut into the scales around that peck fin right there. Outline our fillet. And I just sharpened all my dexters today, so they are very sharp. Beautiful meat on these guys. So the only trick with them is you gotta get over this little pesky rib cage. Kind of angle your knife and go over it on the other side of the backbone right there. So there's one side. Okay, so there is the knob porgy. Now let's fillet the silver and see if there's any difference in the actual fillet. So this guy's a little bit bigger, not as pretty, kind of more plain looking. Same thing, they got a good amount of head meat, kind of just swivel your knife all the way to the tail right here. Work back up and just ride that spine. Other side of the backbone, break through the pin bones. Tell you what, these fish just have such massive little rib cages for being little fish. You always gotta get right over there. It's the peskiest thing about flaying these things. So here's the difference between a silver porgy and a knobbed. The silver's got noticeably whiter meat. This is a little bit more pink. I don't think there's gonna be much of a difference in taste. Just wanted to show you guys a little comparison. And this is a seven inch narrow fillet, in case you guys are wondering. All of the knives that you see Brooke and I use are Dexter knives, made in USA, very affordable, and you can't beat it for the buck. And you guys can actually save 20% off all Dexter knives. Go in the description box below, use code Landshark, or you guys can check them out at DexterOutdoors.com. Now, these porgies are about to turn into an absolutely epic taco night. I'll catch you guys in the kitchen. First off, I'd like to say cheers to the weekend. We're having margaritas tonight. 
and tacos. So cheers to everybody at home. You guys are having a good day, good Friday, and a wonderful weekend. So Brooke and I are both making fish for tacos. She's doing some on the grill. I'm gonna be making some lightly panko. I have the porgy sitting here in buttermilk. Um, not seasoned, just plain buttermilk. Going into some panko, we're gonna keep it very simple just to taste the true nature of the fish. And then we're gonna lightly salt them when they come off of the heat. We got a bunch of sauces in the fridge. We got rice and beans going down. Okay, so this thing is my absolute favorite thing to cook on lately. This is our Camp Chef Woodwind Pellet Grill. Brooke has some uh, fish steaming and aluminum foil in here. And then I'm frying outside. So I don't know about you guys, but I hate stinking up the house with fried fish. Um, let's turn this heat down just a little bit. So. You guys probably have fried fish in your house before, and you know that it stinks. So it's nice to fry fish outside on this side burner right here, which this pellet grill comes with. I, I uh, cook on my walk out here, uh, big fish fries, made paella out here, all sorts of stuff. I absolutely love this thing. Look at these bad boys. Crispy, crunchy, Porgy fillets and our panko breadcrumbs. I don't think I've ever made uh, fish tacos with fried fish before. Made it with grilled fish, blackened fish, but I don't think ever with fried fish. I know Brooke has them, they were freaking delicious. I actually didn't tell you guys. I attempted my own homemade tortillas today. I didn't film it. And every single batch of fish that we do, we've salted. And the salt will adhere to it when it's nice and hot, it'll get sucked in. And this cooling rack, I'm telling you right now, one of the best investments you can make as a home chef, this little cooling rack. That underside, you know when you put paper towels underneath fried fish, it always gets soggy? No sog right here. So this is our spread tonight. Mexican rice, black beans, Brooke was in charge of that. And look at this absolutely beautiful fish she whipped up. So this is porgy that she made on the grill. It's a little lemon, butter, paprika, um, kind of steamed it and then I try to make homemade taco shells, homemade uh, flour tortilla shells and I'm pretty proud of them. They came out nice and fluffy. Um, they're not supposed to be uniform because they're homemade just like street tacos. They're not supposed to all be the same. And then we made a little avocado uh, cream sauce with cilantro, garlic, a bunch of stuff and this is what we're gonna do. Okay, put a little bit of that. That's like your glue for your fish taco. Then you get a nice big piece of porgy, your fried fish, some crunch, some green cabbage, and then you finish it off with some homemade pico de gallo. What do you think about that overflowing taco? <laughs> it looks pretty good. Oh yeah. Okay, so this is second round of constructing tacos. Bricky got me these little taco stands, absolutely love them. Let's go for a smaller piece of fish. Two little pieces of fish. I almost forgot my glue. Almost you got it? You can't forget the glue, no it holds way. it all together. This glue is delicious, I, I know. I've had it before. I didn't talk, wow. tell you guys about this. This is a little copycat Taco Bell mild sauce. Big Taco Bell fan right here, we love it. So we're just gonna finish it off with a little bit of that. And our pico has jalapeno, tomato, red onion, cilantro, lime juice, salt, pepper, and a little garlic powder. Look at those. Cheers to family, good food, and for all of our health. Um, we've all been lucky. Yeah, we can't exactly all guess. <laughs> Who knows anybody that makes homemade taco shells? These things are really good. And everything that Victor put together here is just superb. This is this is quite the treat. It it actually tastes as good as it looks. It's gorgeous and it tastes amazing. Brooks little little piece of pure fish there. Man, that's nice too. Okay, hands down, best taco I've ever had. The f people always say like you need to make your own taco shells. Don't use 
store bought and I was always like, yeah, whatever, they taste good. I don't think I ever want to eat another store bought taco shell after that. They were so good. But the crispy fish was just absolutely amazing. This porgy tonight was amazing. Brooks and Victor's take on porgy. It's such a mild fish and it's really high up there on my list. Tacos with these homemade taco shells. I've never actually had them with homemade shells and it just set the bar so high for tacos. We've all been really lucky during this whole crisis and uh, all of our friends and family. I mean, I don't know anyone in like our group that's been affected by it. So hopefully you guys are staying healthy and um, I'm just so happy to be able to do this. And by the way, the only thing that would make this meal better if Brandon and his wife and uh, kid were here, but they couldn't make it. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. We got a wonderful meal with the family on a Friday night and I'll catch you guys in the next one.